What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Astro DFS bringing you a brand new video. Today's video going over tight ends and a man defenses because honestly there's not a whole lot of tight ends to talk about so we're gonna we're gonna combine them for you. So week three's main slate right we're, we're getting the injury news now over all the positions. Uh, obviously Sunday is the final decision on some of these but we have a good idea who's going to be in who's going to be out um, may have some surprises but for the most part we know so tight end honestly I, I look at Sam Laporte at 6k hasn't really been involved uh, so far in Detroit uh, look at his two games right he's got eight targets in two games this is a really good bounce back opportunity for Laporta against Arizona Obviously, Detroit's got a really good run game. They focus on the run. If Arizona can do what they've done uh, last week, especially to this Detroit defense, who's, you know, Baker got them, uh, Stafford and the Rams kind of got them, uh, especially towards the end. Th this could be a really good game, right? And Sam Laporta in this matchup is has got a really good matchup. Granted, most tight ends in the league really haven't done much this season. There's only a, a few tight ends that have really... Had good games, but for this one, uh, L Laporta at 6K, I, I think, is definitely worth it. Uh, especially if you want to get a little cheaper off Amon Ra. I think Laporta is a great play. Uh, sounds like George Kittle is going to be out, so we get an opportunity we'll talk about here in a minute. And then Brock Bowers, 5,400. Yeah, this is a defense that's gotten beaten by tight end so far. They've gotten beaten by running backs as well. And Brock Bowers is the uh, tight end leader in yards so Brock Bowers at 5400 have to have him in your player pool uh, necessarily doesn't need to be a lock but needs to be uh, considered in cash lineups uh, next Jake Ferguson uh, 4500 against Baltimore I, I thought Baltimore played against uh, tight ends very well but uh, the combination in their linebacker room with Patrick Queen not there anymore is obviously taking a hit so uh, Jake Ferguson in this matchup to where you get another high total. Uh, you get to where, you know, Baltimore's really good um, in their secondary. I, I still like Dallas in this matchup. So um, just taking Ferguson against a, a defense that's played poorly against tight ends uh, and in his price point, I think, yet again, if you want to get cheaper and you're looking for a Dak stack, uh, Ferguson's there, or if you want to, you know, triple and do a quarterback with two pass catchers, which is never really a bad thing. Um, if you're very confident in that team's offense and, and get lucky and get both, um, the, uh, correct pass catchers, 4,500, uh, Jake Ferguson is a nice combo piece for that. Uh, I like Dalton Schultz, 4,300 against Minnesota, Minnesota dealing with a, a couple injuries defensively, one, a linebacker, the other one, Dallas Turner, a big hit there. Um, so in this one, I, I like Dalton Schultz's upside. I don't think I'm, I'm really getting there for cash, but I think in tournaments, it's worth it. Uh, Firemuth against the Chargers, this one is it, strictly a tournament. I don't want to rely on Arthur Smith and his tight ends, right? Four for four in both games, uh, but red zone targets really haven't been there for him. Um, they, they've prioritized the run. They don't care if they kick, you know three, four, five, six field goals a game. Uh, so the the upside for Firemuth is kind of risky, but his floor is is safe. They're going to include him in the game um, there. Next on the list, I mean, we're, we're going down. We're going down a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Aikens, 3K against the Giants. Um, it, it's it's not a great play. Like I said, the, the tight end player pool, in my opinion, is kind of weak. Um but Jordan Aikens uh, last week wasn't really included at all. I, I don't think it's the greatest thing, right? He's an older tight end, really hasn't accomplished much in the league. Uh, but in this matchup where maybe the Giants stop Cleveland's run game, Aikens is a good option um, to go with. I, I just don't I don't love it. it it's just worth mentioning uh, a cheap against a very bad defense, I guess, is where I'm going at it with that. Uh, and then we go down to cheap tight ends, and I mean cheap, right? I like Jatavion Sanders again, right? He has not, with with Bryce Young, has not done anything, right? He's gotten three receptions in two games for 12 yards, so n not much, right? But you get Andy Dalton this week. You get a defense that's gotten pretty beat. Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, granted, 
those guys can compare to Jutavion Sanders is two different levels. But uh, I like Jutavion Sanders with Andy Dalton this week versus uh, Bryce Young. Clearly, that offense is not ready for Bryce Young. Uh, there's just not enough talent, whether it be him understanding the offense, the offensive line working, just the chemistry with the pass catcher. So uh, with Andy Dalton, I like Jutavion Sanders. But at the same time, I think if you're playing cash, if George Kittle's out, Eric Sabart, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, is the next guy to step up. You know, if you're looking at a matchup, sorry, Kittle had an amazing matchup, the best matchup for tight ends this week against the Rams who were missing, um, you know, a a safety, which is, you know, some guy that usually helps with tight ends. You look at last week, two for 26, kind of the next guy up. And he's at the minimum of 2500 So even if you did play him, right, you're you're paying a defense, right? You could pay up for a defense if you like a defense. We'll talk about some defenses here in just a minute. But the other thing, if you're playing him, Jordan Mason is pretty much another cash chalk play. Brandon Ayuk is also kind of a really solid cash option. If you're playing him, you're, you're you know, you're either fading Mason or you're fading Ayuk. And if you're playing him and Ayuk, you kind of want Brock Purdy then in, in that aspect. So that's got to be some roster construction if you're considering taking uh, Sobert there. And then we go to defense, right? Cleveland against the Giants offensive line. Yeah, like like Miles Garrett, the, the secondary for, for Cleveland. Still really solid defense there. Uh, Raiders against Carolina. Granted, it's not Bryce Young anymore. You kind of look at the what the Raiders have given up. I, I mean, Chargers is one thing. They're a 2-0 team. Still, right? Three sacks. They bring in Wilkins. This team's only gotten three sacks in two games. Against this Carolina offensive line, that could change. But I, I, you're paying it a lot for a defense uh, that really hasn't produced yet. Granted, it's a great matchup, but still take that with, with caution. Uh, Seattle, 3,500 going against Miami with Skylar Thompson as the quarterback. We've seen Miami have success with Skylar Thompson, though. Uh, hasn't always been the greatest, but we have seen them have success. You look at Seattle's two games defensively. Uh, week one against Denver, a bottom offense. You know, nine DK points. Week two against New England's offense, which is a bottom five. I'm going to say bottom five. Two bottom five offenses, and they still allowed 16 and 20 points. So... Do you want to take a shot against uh, Miami with Seattle there? It's a risk you're going to have to take. Uh, Pittsburgh is now worth mentioning if Justin Herbert is out. Uh, granted, Taylor Heineke is there. I think Taylor Heineke is a really good backup quarterback to have. Uh, but him in that system, running the ball, ugly game, low low total game. 3,300 Pittsburgh's worth mentioning. Uh, next... Uh, Tampa is another one at 3K against Denver. My only concern with Tampa, if you were going to target Tampa, you have to be cautious. Vita Vey is out. You know, a, a very good run stopper on that defensive line. And then Winfield's out again, a safety. Granted, it's against Denver, but Denver was able to put up 20 points against Seattle. Be cautious when playing Tampa, right? They could have a really good game, and I'm fine with that, but... You have to be cautious. They're they're missing two starters on their defense. Uh, One is extreme. Both are extremely impactful at their position. So take that with with risk. Uh, Texans defense against Minnesota. That one I'm also targeting, right? I think it's a great pivot off of Denver. Minnesota's offense has looked pretty damn good. Uh, Jordan Addison out yet again. Uh, Justin Jefferson healthy will be playing. I, I just think Houston's defense is, is going to step up in this one um, against that Minnesota offensive line against Sam Darnold, right? Granted, it's it's going to be hard to contain Justin Jefferson with the secondary the Texans have, but I think they'll find a way to get it done. Uh, next off of that, you're looking at the Titans defense if Malik Willis is the, the quarterback. Uh, Bears against Indy. I mean, the Bears find a way to get to to get points right against Houston's offense. They still give you six fantasy points, so for twenty six hundred, I don't mind that at all. Really, um, there there's 
always the upside of Anthony Richardson throwing picks. Uh, he's a very mobile, not afraid to throw the ball downfield. So 2,600 is not the worst. Saints at 2,600 as well. You see what they do last week against Denver whenever this loads. Or against Dallas, not Denver. Uh, against Dallas, two picks against Dak and three sacks. Gets you eight DK points. Facing a Philly team, runs the ball really good. Good offensive line. But you've seen Jalen Hurts kind of be sloppy uh, these these first two games and no A.J. Brown. So those are, those are other ones. Um, and then after that, the only kind of defense I'm looking at, very cheap. I don't want to play the Rams against the 49ers. They're missing some people there. I don't want to play the Cardinals against Detroit. Although the the Cardinals have found a way to get uh, fantasy points in their two games against Buffalo and the Rams. Um, you know, seven sacks in two games. Granted, um, had the... was a defensive touchdown? I'm trying to think if it was a, a special teams touchdown, though. And I kind of think it was. Uh, but 11 against the Rams last week. They're just facing a good offense. I kind of like Denver... It's it's not the greatest thing. I, by all means, I said Denver's a, a terrible offense. Their defense, week one against Seattle, they get a pick, they get a fumble, they get two sacks. They still get two safeties. Last week against Pittsburgh, a, a bad offense, get two sacks against them. Um, I mentioned uh, Denver's got a terrible defense, but in, in this matchup, Maybe things go ugly. I'm willing to take a shot on them. So, uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, the rest of the player position videos are already out. Uh, I'll. I said I was gonna have a live stream Sunday. I don't know if that's the case now. I apologize if anyone was looking forward to it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I uh, had uh, something I forgot about event scheduled. So. Uh, probably won't do it, but I will uh, definitely make a post about it if I'm not able to. So uh, if you guys are interested in uh, my player pool spreadsheet for the DraftKings main slate, if you guys are interested in my bets and props or any fantasy DFS questions and want to join us, the link for our Discord is in the description down below. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.